Fantasy. And now we are back. Welcome yes. back to part two of speed runs of actual play. Uh, uh, Swords that master. We're going to find out what our rogues are doing right now. All right. I'm going to roll for the overtone of this new phase. All right. I am jovial. That's good. Because I want to do a perilous phase. All right. So one thing to just kind of put out there right now, we're already on to our second motif. We're flying through these. That's great. Uh, so something in this, as we describe, has to echo something that we've already described before. So kind of keep an eye on that first motif uh, and try and echo things. Um, and then try and listen for when people echo things. All right. <clears throat> it's jovial now. Ooh, okay, jovial. Uh, I am going to... Oh, I'm going to I'm going to flash uh uh fast forward just a teeny bit in this story. And uh where I want to have you now is the lot of you, uh the our three rogues plus uh hex and a refraction I believe is the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh do we have um anyone else have people with them? No. Okay. Uh you're hanging on to this amulet, swinging from one of the ribs. Uh, above you, a swarm of human-sized uh, locusts armed with uh, shields and spears are climbing down. Uh, they're coming out of the uh, skull of this giant, uh, crossing the spine and trying to climb down as you're trying to fight off the... Uh, the uh, they're trying to uh, knock you off the amulet. Uh, so the amulet hanging from this, you guys are down at the bottom. They're coming across and coming down. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hand the dice to one. Oh, I got to give you a thunder. So that was the storm. That is your immediate threat. That is the thing you have to deal with right now. The thunder, which is a distant threat, which we may or may not get to, is that that flickering light uh, that I had once uh, described inside the skull uh, is now uh, a... Uh, it is now burning quite brightly and billowing out uh, bright green and orange smoke from the the nostrils and eye holes of the skull. All right. Handing the dice to Nadja, because I think, uh, is it Aya? Yes. Yes, I think Aya was it, like the, the headmost in the party, so probably the, mm -hmm. the least furthest down the amulet here. So where this is a perilous phase, uh, again, this is how this works. I will be describing uh, how the storm, which in this case are these well-armed uh, giant locusts, deal with you. And all of you are allowed to interrupt. You can step in and just like slip and struggle. If you want me to kind of quiet down so you can do that, just kind of wave at me. I'll, I'll pay attention. Uh, but only the person with the dice can either overcome or succumb to what's going on right now. So as I describe the peril occurring and, and happening to all of you, just listen for that moment when you want to roll the die and tell me to shut up and you take over. And with that in mind, uh, I'm going to have these, uh, these insect-like warriors uh, climbing upside down. They've got shields that they can hold on their back and they got spears that they hold in spare arms as they're climbing with the rest of their arms. Uh, the ones on the side are just throwing spears. You know, the ones that are on other ribs are throwing spears down at you, uh, bouncing off the uh, chains all around you. And uh, I, like, I don't know, is anybody getting hit by them? Or are you, how are you dealing with this here? Uh, can I, can I, can I yeah. jump in here for one second? I think uh, I'm, I'm yelling uh, for my, my friend, uh, uh, Em, I've forgotten your name. I apologize. Lena, no problem. Uh, uh, I, I'm yelling for, for Lena to help me swing the amulet uh, because clearly we cannot climb up into these spears. Uh, I, I, think, I think we're going to die horribly if we try that plan. So I'm hoping that we can swing it uh, far enough that we can jump off into like one of the ribs so that we're at least partially shelter sheltered from the rain of, uh, of, of spears. Um, Excellent. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep coming with the storm here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, oh, okay. So there's a bunch of them that are coming down the top of the, uh, the 
the the chain of the amulet, the part that's hanging on the the rib cage, and they're anchoring it. They're trying to. This is actually a variety of bugs, right? So we've got a oh, bunch good. of like big beetles that are coming in and just you know with their big meaty arms grabbing a hold of it and trying to hold the chain uh and then uh um down the very center of it comes uh a, a big like a head taller than most humans cricket who is carrying a uh like a a nice thin but long sword uh with you know holding it in three hands as it's coming down um straight at uh i uh and uh, let's let's wh where are your uh where's your familiar where's hex at right oh no wait, hex is the oh, hex is the student well you know what let's put the student in trouble that's the person that yeah. needs to be in trouble mm -hmm. uh is hex out in front of you between you and this uh this cricket warrior or i i think at, hex tends to lag behind so okay. it would it would make more sense that um Refraction and I are ahead, and we see Hex being approached by this thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to roll. Um, oh yeah, and go for and it. Say my thing. Oh, right. you're glum, um, but no glum. moral or anything. So you yeah. you're welcome to interpret that how you want. Uh, Aya holds up her mirror reflection, and there's like there's a like the cacophony of this this battle kind of fades into a muted sound and you can hear very clearly her blowing onto the mirror and this huge gust of wind whips out across this bridge and starts knocking Locus and this this very awesome. tall cricket man into the <laughs> chasm <laughs> that is great now so here's the deal you can end this right now. You could say, I'm done with this perilous phase. I have taken care of it and just hand me the dice. Or if you want the phase to go on, just say it and we'll continue with it. Uh, I, I want to say, I want to see uh, the other characters. I want to see how they fight battles. So I would sure. like to yeah. continue. Um, <laughs> do I pass the dice to one of them then? Yes, but you can hold on and pass whenever you want. You can't okay. roll them again until somebody else has gotcha. rolled, but you can... Um, all right, so I think this is great. This is gorgeous. Uh, a, a spectral wind comes across and and uh, blows the um, uh, most of this insect army off into the chasm here. I th like. I think the the bit about this that I want to kind of grab a hold of is that some of them do have wings, right? So they're starting to fight <laughs> oh, against it. Of course, <laughs> awesome. Uh, and so the, the, this cricket that we saw go off, like the wings come out from behind the legs and flutter and it comes uh, zooming in. Who has the dice? Oh, you don't have it. You haven't handed the dice yet. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, then I am going to uh, threaten Arahan, the fire hair. Uh, I, I, I am ready for this. I, yes. I, I think that there's going to be some slipping and struggling, Effie. I think there's uh, a moment where, where I, 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 I fight like a couple of them have managed to knock one down, but like two more take the place. And when I see this cricket man who seems to like, they, they have kind of parted. I, I get the sense that he may be their leader as uh, he's flying against this gust of wind uh, coming straight at us. I think yeah. there's just like a, a, a classic moment where Arahan leaps out and then there's like slow-mo with like hair, the only like <laughs> reds and yellows in this. <laughs> And I grab the kick cricket man and we go tumbling down into the clouds because clearly we're above the cloud layer. <laughs> that is great. Of course. That is, um, oh, great. I'm, I'm going to pass the dice to Lena. Yes. Oh, oh that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Choice. Uh, so Arahan disappears beneath the clouds. <laughs> All right. Um, can I roll right away? If you'd like to, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'm thinking this might be a good time for decisive action. <laughs> All right, and it You're rolled, glum. so it's glum. Um, all right, um, what I'm thinking is of turning to Aya, who uh, has the mirror there, and saying, Aya, are you ready? I nod quietly. Yes. Perfect. And I, I, I as, as carefully as I can, I get out my axe, 
and I ignore all the worrying of the crickets and the locusts and everything that's happening. And I just focus on this necklace that we're clinging to desperately. And I actually cut it so that we tumble down, uh, uh, tied together by the uh, necklace, but that we follow in our hands um, path downwards into the clouds. Oh. And, and can we end the, the phase there? Yes, you may, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, I'll take the dice there and I will roll for my next overtone. I think I think somehow Hex falls faster than everyone and Aya falls slower. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, so I rolled a tie for the overplayer. That just means uh, I flip my overtone. I get no special threads or anything like that. So we are glum as you're falling through the clouds. Okay. Uh, I don't have to pick it up right where we left off, but I kind of do. I kind of want to, so I'm going to do that. Uh, it's a, I'm going to do a discovery phase too, because this is just a, a really weird. Um, uh, well, we have this necklace. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is in those brief moments of fall, right? Like we don't have a whole lot of this. Is, the, you know, the whole, uh, everything goes into slow motion because your life is flashing before your eyes. Uh, I think I, I do, I love the imagery of Aya uh, kind of falling slower than everyone else. So just like drifting away from everyone. Um, the whole thing is going down ahead of all of you is Arahan. I'm going to hand the, uh, I'm going to give you a distant threat. This distant threat is the fact that you can see below uh the the ground <laughs> coming up towards you i oh, i want to just give the ground something interesting to um well it's nighttime uh i think beneath it's just these shifting sand dunes uh but they're shifting in the starlight right so there's just this nice uh shimmering along them uh and it's also kind of hard to see exactly uh how far away or where they are uh, it's a very dreamlike fall here. I am now going to hand the dice to, well, the first to fall was Arahan. So I'm going to hand them <laughs> to Arahan. Uh, now it's a discovery phase. So you need to show us something that either you know or that you're just now experiencing as you're falling towards the ground. Oh, you're on it. Oh, it's a moral. Perfect. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, and well, then you ask me a leading question about it. So. Uh, I think the moral is pretty clear. Never jump without knowing where you're going to land. <laughs> so uh, what, what are you discovering here? Um, let me think about this. So we're, we're falling down and there are sand dunes below us. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yes. Um, yes. Oh. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm discovering. Uh, I, th I think uh, I think this will be interesting. Uh, what I'm discovering is that uh, with enough distance, enough speed, enough time, uh, the bug man that I was fighting uh, has has shaken its head as if some ensorcelment has stopped it from uh, uh, from being controlled, and it actually uh, it like like starts to act differently. Uh, so the question that I have for you is uh, um, who is actually controlling all of these insect beasts high above that is no longer? Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, okay. So here's, here's this wonderful uh, painted room, a corner I've painted myself into, which is great. Um, I have to tell you something and it's something your character is going to know. So I'm going to make it, Oh, as it shakes off this this thing, uh, the billowing, uh, you know, the green and orange smoke that you saw before comes out of its, you know, nose and, and eyes and, and disappears, it dissipates uh, as it's going down, as if it like heads back towards the skull. So clearly whoever is in the skull here has uh, command of them. Uh, and uh, I, is that enough? Do you feel like that's enough for you to know? No, I'm or good. You, you're I'm good? good? Okay, good. So uh, let's continue with this phase. Go ahead and hand the dice to someone else. I'm going to give them to Lena here. See how the people that are not quite 
so close to the ground are doing. <laughs> Leah? You should roll first, Em. You're mute. All right. There you go. Jovi. All right. And um, catch me up where I am again. I was paying attention to the chat and lost track. That's fine. <laughs> You're still falling. Uh, all that's <laughs> happened is that we've discovered that these insects are under the control of whoever is making the smoke in the giant skull. Oh, okay, great. And so I'm asking a question uh, for you to answer for discovery, right? Well, you you discover something and then ask me a leading question about it. Okay, cool. So I'm hurtling down with Aya floating a little bit behind us and uh, Hex and I are clinging to this necklace. Um, and um, let's see. So I'm, I think I'm sort of trying to scan the ground looking for a good place to land. And boy, does there not look like one. Um, uh, so, um, let's see, um, I think I'm going to look back up to the heavens mm -hmm. and, um, because there was this, this connection before with the color of the, the stones yeah. and the stars and, um, uh, and we're, we're glum, right? Uh, you are what I mean, you the are. The overtone is glum. And the, the overtone glum. is glum, yes. Okay. You're jovial. All right. Um, so um, I'm going to grab the, um, the necklace around my neck and start just like, I don't know, hoping and praying and, you know, doing whatever it is that I think wizards do because I'm not one and uh, try and like make this connection happen more. And uh, what I discover is that um, there is um, uh, there is an arc that happens between the stones that looks like the 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 color in the sky, um, uh, and my question to you, uh, over player, is um, uh, how does it um, help us be able to guide our way down? All right. So like you, you're almost like an electrical arc or something. It's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, how does it... <laughs> oh, I, I think that I think, um, okay. So you know how when you got two magnets and yeah. you put them in one position, they definitely pull together and you put them in another position, they force themselves apart and you can feel that as you're doing it. I think you've got the same sensation with your amulet and the other amulet. So you can definitely feel uh, a way to either draw your amulet towards or away from the other amulet. Do you, you know, does that satisfy what you're looking for there? Yeah. So as it goes closer or farther away, it changes. Is that right? Yeah. But based on like how you move it, right? So you take your amulet and that arc, you can feel that arc out. Uh, so you cool. can kind of guide yourself that way. Awesome. Great. Uh, I am not yet done with this phase. All right. That's right. You're the one who ends it. Um, who did we start out with? Uh, was it uh, Aya? Or... Okay. I am going to hand the dice over to you. Okay. Um, roll. Yeah. Um... As ever. Um, mm -hmm. So Aya, Aya is drifting down slowly. Yeah. <laughs> the um, safest among us. And Hex, Hex is clinging to this amulet and kind of freaking out um, because they're falling faster. They feel heavier. Uh, and Aya just kind of shakes her head in exasperation as this is happening. Um, but there's, I feel, I feel something when Lena uh plays with the polarity of the two amulets and i discover that there's something about the interaction of those two amulets that makes me heavier and makes hex start to float Ooh. what connection do i have to these amulets that's good Sweet. oh okay um i'm super digging this whole 
uh, reflection thing going on too. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's in the mirror, right? Like uh, you, uh, is the mirror reflection or refraction? The mirror is reflection. Okay, yes. All right, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, so classic. I think uh, I think that um, it's not super straightforward, but you are not a super straightforward sort of person, right? Like, so you can see patterns in the sky when you look at the mirror that you can also see between the two uh, amulets. So you can see, sort of unlock the 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 code, if you will, of like which way the amulet has to go to cause different things. Uh, and uh, it's the amulets, oh, okay, and to bring this like all the way home here with you and Hex, uh, there is a sort of mentor-mentee relationship between the giant amulet and the one that Lena mm. has that also plays out in that same sort of way. Is that feel good does that feel like something that or do you want more no that sounds that sounds awesome <laughs> all right excellent let's uh let's put you all on the ground then i'm ending this phase and i'm rolling to see what happens next jovial it's a jovial fault here death yeah all right it'll be a loud landing i think is the phrase <laughs> yes uh so this is, I am going to do a rogues phase, uh, and we're going to set this. Okay, so we're setting this in the middle of the next day. The uh... Can I use my locus? Oh, do you have a locus? Yeah, yeah, go for it. What's the locus again? We're in the sauna bragging about how we got out of it. <sighs> <laughs> to our new friends <laughs> excellent yeah okay okay this is good um oh all right so so what is your i, I want to know which sauna this is. Is, is did you say anything specific or just the sauna a sauna, a sauna i just sauna. said a sauna but yeah. um i i sort of had two in mind and so if i can describe the one that i think it is sure go rather, for it. rather than one that i've built because we just got here mm -hmm. i think this is a sauna that is um uh, an ancient sauna from um, like a people that used to live here. The people that actually live here now have totally different dwellings, but I recognize that this is a sauna and it's made of stone and shell. Okay. Um, giant shells. Yes. Um, and um, so I uh, cut down some trees and got some wood and made the, you know, get a, got the water and stuff so that we're enjoying it with our new friends who live here. And, um, uh they've never used it before either so we're introducing them into this ancient tradition from a past time in their land beautiful beautiful okay so uh i, I mean like if it's the people that used to live here it's clearly a giant sauna right like this is uh -oh. this is uh between two mountains sealed up in stone and giant shells um and uh i am going to what what should i do for the thunder here hold on one moment I'll be with you in a second. Uh, what am I? I'm jovial. All right. Um, sauna is such a safe place. <laughs> oh, I know what the thunder is. Uh, the you're in this sauna. The 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 lot of you are relaxing. Maybe not hex. Certainly not your new friends. Who I mean, you're clearly sweating because that's what you do in a sauna. But uh, outside, uh, there is a uh, army rumbling <laughs> waiting for you to come out. Uh, so that is oh, your okay. your thunder <laughs> uh, while you all are relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'm going to hand the dice to... Uh, well, I don't want to hand them straight away to Lena because this is her sauna. So we're going to start to see how Arahan uh, nurses the the wounds taken in the fall into the sand. Uh, so I have a question. How's everyone feeling about this? I mean, obviously we're all here in a sauna and we're introducing some people to the sauna. Did my bug friend make it? Yeah, I, I'm down with that. If you want Cricket yeah, to be with you. Let's definitely. Awesome. 
so I think uh, I think it's. I will point out that this is a rogues phase. If cricket is featured in one of the demands, you can add their name to your named list. So that's just something out there. Go on. <laughs> oh, Epi, you're going to make me find cricket man sword and sorcery pictures. <laughs> actually. Yeah. Find some thrycreen all up in here. All right, uh, how am I nursing my wounds? Uh, well, uh, clearly it's in the traditional way of my people, uh, mm -hmm. which is to say, um, Arhan actually doesn't have any like open slashes and well, uh, visible open slashes. I think that I've done what my people do, which is I've created mud poultices for him. Uh, but you can see that there is like significant bruising. Whatever that landing was, it was not gentle, at least not for me. I don't know how the people with cool <laughs> sorceries did. It, uh, but it looks like I have like maybe uh, Bugman shaped mud patches, <laughs> old mud patches on my shoulders, and uh, like so, some bruises where like I impacted the ground pretty tough. Uh, but uh, like next to me on the ledge is obviously the cloak with the the head of the beast that is my like signature item, and uh, I am currently practicing clicking at cricket. Um, oh, nice! So 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 that's a thing. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, I, uh, um, I'm going to make a demand of you. Uh, mm. How are you? Uh, like, um, I want you to show us how you are planning for us to bypass that army that is waiting for us or gathering outside. Cool. Um, should cool roll question. First. I should roll. Okay. So. I can't get away from it. Um, <laughs> so what was the demand again? How, show us how we are going to escape this army that's outside. Right. How you specifically are, are coming up with, with, with something that's going to let us get through, whether you're scouting or whatever. I think, I think I'm quietly casting a spell in the background. Um, and I don't think anyone else notices that they are evaporating, but we are. Uh, in the steam of the sauna, we are like everybody's like, yeah, I'm sitting on the ground, but there's no, you're, we are all slowly like becoming mist and floating up to escape through, through this roof of the sauna, except for Hex, which is um, why it's taking so long. Okay, that is beautiful. Uh, it, I think, wonderfully uh, echoes Arahan disappearing beneath the clouds, mm. uh, which means we have finished our third motif, which means we're free to reincorporate now whenever we want. Just want to go over that again. You just, we just continue playing as we've been playing. Uh, we don't have any mysteries yet. Uh, for the moral, you reincorporate it by proving that uh, or showing us that you've learned the moral or showing us that you never will or showing teaching the moral to someone else. Uh, it doesn't matter who does that. It doesn't have to be the character that wrote the moral. For a motif, you look at these uh, motifs here and I'll just try and separate them slightly because they have to be separate um, uh, bits here. But you look at them and you're gonna pick one of those three and, and sort of synthesize a new idea out of any two items on that motif. Uh, and then if we roll a mystery, we'll get to that, but we, we don't particularly have that right now. So, uh, anyways, I think that that's gorgeous. I love the disappearing into the steam or evaporating without it. Uh, do we want to continue with this phase? Do you have a demand you want to make of someone? Um, yes. Um, I would like to demand of Lena show us how um show us show us who our friends in this sauna are and why we have a mutual enemy <laughs> in this nice. army that's outside awesome all right um let's see as we all float away <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, they're floating with us, right? That yes. Oh, okay. sort of everybody that's in there. Um, Roll first. Thank you. Nice. Jovial. All right. Well, Only obviously. the best of friends. 
we're all singing. I'm encouraging them to sing to raise their <laughs> spirits because who cares about this this uh, army? Um, and can they totally be cricket people? Yeah. So they're um, they're singing clicking. This uh, our the author of our tale is one shady author who has spent this whole time not describing it in the hopes that <laughs> they can reveal. Haha! They were crickets all along. <laughs> Go on. Um, and the uh, so the, the the people with us are friends of the cricket that um, Arhan has befriended, and they too are freed from whatever the spell is that had been controlling them. And the army outside is a giant mass of crickets and other uh, um, insects, which are still in the thrall of the, the evil spell. And so they are going with us because they also want to be able to free their, their fellows and themselves. So um, that, so I did a reincorporation. So I'm not oh, gonna get the dice again. Yeah, I reincorporated um, the evaporating and the clicking sure yeah that's perfect if that makes sense yeah um they're singing clicking um and so maybe i'll pass this to uh let's see arahan yes and my demand will be um um oh, i kind of want to know the name of this cricket person uh I, I, that's not really a demand. More like, um, go ahead and make a demand. I'll include it just for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Um, what? What? Uh, show us what um, bond of 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 uh, loyalty that you and the cricket person exhibit as we escape. Uh, all right, Rad. Um... So this is a moral. You're going to get a moral unless you reincorporate. I'm 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 pondering some reincorporation real quick, but I'm not gonna sure. I'm not gonna take too long here. If I if yeah. I can't think of one, I'll just say a thing. Um, uh, you know what? I'm gonna jump ahead because mm -hmm. in the rogues phase we can absolutely and condense time significantly. So I think uh, we're going to build a lot of smoke. We're gonna float <laughs> over the army. And the next scene that the author is writing in this uh, sword and sorcery novel, the shady, shady author, is actually us in a city. And um, I think that that uh, the bond of friendship is. Uh, I feel like since uh, my friend to click chick, uh, <laughs> I wrote the name in the in the. Nice. In the chat. Uh, since my friend to click chick is uh, a bug person, and and not necessarily of people. Um, the same way that he kind of like uh, saved me when we were falling, which was implied by the scene in the sauna. Uh, I think that we're, uh, uh, I am similarly teaching him the ways of people and occasionally supporting him in being a giant strange bug person in a sword and sorcery city filled with tigers that people ride and whatnot. <laughs> but like, you know, there's, there's like a montage, right? Like you, you'll see like us at a bar and they service a thing and I'm using utensils and he's like devouring the food <laughs> you know, with his like mandibles. And uh, there's like maybe like a scene where we're like arm wrestling, but he's like arm wrestling to other people with his other arms and stuff like that. So uh, this is the, we're, we're, we're doing that like two warriors that fought and now we're friends and now I'm showing him like the stuff that I like to do. And so yeah. like, that's, that's the montage. Um, uh, but I think I'm going to advance it to a thing and Epi, I'm going to give you the dice oh, and okay. I'm going to ask you, um, uh, I'm going to ask you to show us, uh, show us, uh, who is uh, who is the person that hired us to fetch this amulet, and uh, how do they react when we show up with it? All right, um, just just trying to wrap yeah, this no, up. This is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is good. Uh, okay, so you're you're. I mean, let's make it the city of fire and coin, and we might as well. Um, there are uh, you you approach a uh, a great spire. Um, that is uh, the, where this this uh, wizard um, who hired you through uh, other means, like they wait, what am I? I'm jovial. Oh yeah, all right. So uh, this is this spire, like 
the the whole deal of approaching the spire is that you have to go through like all of this fanfare there's like announcements and there's like all of these servants and people who bring out uh foods and stuff like that but you've never met this wizard uh and uh you've shown up with this you've shown up with the giant's amulet is that correct you have the giant's amulet with you uh you have you often you've you fell with it and everything so you have this amulet to show uh and when it uh shows up uh one of the uh like the uh what what is the i don't want to say head butler but you know like the the person that greets you when you first come in you know the 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 head servant of whatever uh sees that it's there gets a look of panic in his eyes (laughs) uh and tries to sneak out the back door uh I am going to hand the dice to Aya. Show us how uh, you show us how you stop this shady wizard from running off without paying you. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, so you don't. Oh, this is great. Uh, so the tone is glum because we were jovial. And you get to show us how uh, the wizard gets away without paying you. Um, I think, let me look at my keywords here. And you can, Um, if you want to just, if you want to go with your, one of your feats heroic, this is one of those cases where you can, you could be like, no, I'm going to be jovial or I want to be glum and not have this stymie. That's... also, I'm curious, I, uh, does the wizard get away with the amulet? Is the next story going to be us chasing wizards or hills <laughs> and dales? That, that might, <laughs> that sounds really fun. I think I'm going to lean into that. Okay. Um, but I'm stymied. So I think I, I see this wizard sneaking away with our anim- amulet and I open my mouth um, for the first time in this whole adventure to speak. And says, and I reach out, and the wizard looks over uh, their shoulder, um, and they they arc their hand at me, and my voice is shattered, and I am not not able to say anything. In fact, I'm um, I'm I'm gonna have to deal with this. <laughs> this is gonna be a problem for a while. <laughs> um, and yeah, my voice is shattered, and the wizard escapes into into the city with this amulet. Nice. Uh, and that's not a reincorporation of anything, or is it? Um, I don't. I think we Ooh. have two, actually. OK. Because I did one, and um, there was one with Arahan and the cricket, right? Or no, that was Amora. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's good. I think, that's good. I think I can make it um, mm-hmm. an incorporation. I, I like the idea that instead of uh, speaking, uh, green smoke. Nice. Billows from my face <laughs> and I choke on my words. Oh, oh that's beautiful. Gorgeous. Excellent. All right. <laughs> I'm ending it there at 50 minutes and one second. Well done, Yay. folks. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. And it's within the scope of our two hour block, too. Yay. Oh, we are professionals. <laughs> <laughs> that's great thank you so much folks this was a lot of fun doing some pr- pro work up in here everybody <laughs> um uh thank you for letting me join you as a uh, as as host and watching all the stuff and getting to type things up um this was really really fun to watch and be part of um i'm i'm sean um uh and uh, actually i'll do my 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 intro last uh Nadia, okay. um um What's going on with uh, with you these days, and uh, where can folks find you? Yeah, um, I am Nadja. Uh, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Tristaray, or on Twitter at Trist underscore C-H-I. Uh, I have been playing Agon uh, with Sean and John and uh, Karen Twelves. And there's some other thing that I've been invited to, and I don't know what's going on with that, so I'll just tease it in a, in a horrible way and move <laughs> on. Um, and I am playing Solaris very randomly on stream. Uh, currently, 
who have some border tensions with the mushroom people. <laughs> um, like you do. As you do, as you do. It's better than the clan people. We don't speak of them. Um, aside and apart from all of that, I was at St. Jude this past week. I would like to give a shout out to St. Jude Play Live. They are fundraising um, this month for the hospital, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Uh, any, any kid with cancer that gets admitted there, their family doesn't have to pay for anything, not treatment, not housing, not, not food, not anything, travel, whatever. Um, and there's a lot of fundraising going on on Twitch, all over Twitch for this. So find, find somebody that's fundraising and give them some money for charity, for the kids. That's all for me. Emily. <laughs> uh, I'm Emily Carabos, and um, you can find my games at blackgreengames.com. Um, and uh, something I've been up to lately is finishing a, a Monster Hearts campaign that I've been running with some friends, which has been so fun. It's the second season of a mythical television series, which has had three seasons. So and we're thinking about maybe doing another after, but we realized recently that this campaign has been going on for two years. <laughs> so either we're doing something really right or really wrong. We're not sure, but we're enjoying it. <laughs> um, throwing up? Uh, it, it, you know, the time in the characters' lives is much shorter than in ours. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, they are growing up. And um, and the other thing that I wanted to just mention is um, I'm helping uh, organize a, a LARP-oriented uh, conference in the Boston area, uh, in Boston and Peabody. Uh, it's called Living Games Conference at livinggamesconference.com. And uh, the conference itself goes from May 17th to 20th. Uh, it's this, the third time we've done one, and it brings together people from all over the country and all over the world who play LARP and live games and related things, interactive fiction, and, and um, uh, we get together to talk and share and play each other's games. Um, and there's also actually something called a week in Boston um, from Monday the 14th through the, the 16th and 17th, where people will hang out in Boston and uh, visit game stores and um, play games. And so it's a really fun, neat time. Uh, so I invite people from the area who uh, might want to drop by, uh, or if you're, there's still time to register, if you'd like at livinggamesconference.com. It's going to be so cool. Uh, I'm going this year. It is my first year. I'm very excited to, to be there. The panels look, the panels in the summer was like, great. The games look great. Yay. I'm extra Yay. shouting out Living Games. <laughs> So next we have Strash. What's up? Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sleeping on the job here. Uh, I'm Strash. You can find me on Twitter at Strash A. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, this is a busy time in my life because mostly uh, we're in the middle of like three separate things. Um, I'm a part of Off Guard Games. Uh, I know Sean here is, is excited because he's my project manager. We shipped uh, Scum and Villainy off to the printer, so that, that book will probably be going up for pre-order as soon as we get all the T's crossed and the I's dotted. And uh, also, I am in the final sprint here trying to finish up uh, Band of Blades, which is my dark military fantasy game that should be coming out uh, for folks to get the quick, quick start here soon. We're, we're doing some of our last changes. Uh, so that's that's the exciting part. I wish I had something a little bit more wholesome, but unfortunately, my life is mostly work, not a lot of sleep these days. So, Epi, how about you? Uh, I can relate to that. Uh, I'm Epidia. Um, I'm on Twitter at Epidia. Uh, you can find my games at digathousandholes.com, uh, or you can find my sword and sorcery magazine, Worlds Without Master, uh, at worldswithoutmaster.com. That's in issue three is where you find the rules for this game that we just played. And I am working on the long awaited issue 12 right now. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, getting, getting back into the swing of things there. Uh, other than that, uh, helping M out with Living Games, I'm going to give another shout out to Living Games. And um, Tomorrow I'm going to be, I think tomorrow I'm streaming some Torchbearer tomorrow night on uh, Eric Volgaris' channel. So uh, check that out. Uh, how about you, uh, Sean? 
let's hear yeah. what you're up to. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling um, I'm I'm busy. Uh, so right after the stream in an hour, you can come right back to this channel because <laughs> on actual play we'll be streaming streaming sync with uh, Karen McGran running it. Uh, Karen Twelves, uh, Andy Carrison, and myself um, playing some rad nonviolent uh, cyberpunk future uh, activists. Um, trying to make the world more accessible by reverse engineering um, public spaces that are inhospitable to people and making them nice. more hospitable to people um, and uh, anti-design. And uh, it's, it's, uh, that's going to be real fun times. In general, you can find me um, on Twitter at Sean Nittner. And uh, starting in a month, uh, the Big Bad Con Kickstarter will be going live. And uh, we will be uh, bringing out really rad people and we'll have really awesome backer rewards such as delicious gift baskets that you can, that you can stick all in your belly or share with your friends. Uh, so it's going to be in, and this year we're for the first time we're having a pre con day. So it's, it's kind of a three day con, but we've added a fourth now. So there's going to be some cool social events on the day before as well. So looking, looking forward to that. So thanks everyone for, hanging out with us. Um, thank you, amazing rogues. For doing yes, it. thank you. And uh, and I am incredibly impressed because we did it all in time. Yeah. So, good job, <laughs> all, all, all of us. Uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see anybody who hangs around in an hour. Bye.